As a drone pilot, have you ever opened up a Lance app like Autopilot or Loft and seen those red boxes with a big fat zero? Or maybe you've spotted an altitude limit that's just too low for the job you need to do. Well, that's where further coordination comes in. It's a special request process, only available to commercial pilots, that can get you approval to fly in zero grid areas or above posted altitudes as long as you stay under 400 feet. In this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to apply for further coordination in the FAA drone zone, share some real-world tips to avoid denials, and give you exact templates you can copy to make sure you give the FAA exactly what they need the first time around. Like always, all the links will be provided in the description, so with that said, let's jump in. Hey everyone. This is Adam with UAV Coach, and as a leading drone education company, our goal is to help drone pilots fly safely and legally. When requesting further coordination, you can do it in two places, the FAA Drone Zone website or certain Lance apps that offer further coordination. While both work, in this video, we'll focus on the FAA Drone Zone since it's the most popular option and often easier to use than the other apps. And again, only Part 107 pilots can request this. And the three main reasons you would need further coordination are flying in a zero grid area where the Lance ceiling is zero, flying higher than the posted altitude, like flying 300 feet in a 200 foot grid area, or going 400 feet above a 200 foot structure in controlled airspace, or flying in controlled airspace that is not Lance enabled, where you have to submit a manual airspace authorization request through FAA Drone Zone instead of Lance. With that said, let's get into it. First, log into the FAA Drone Zone, then click the Launch Drone Owners and Pilots dashboard and head to your Part 107 dashboard. You'll see a yellow text bar at the top with important info about Lance and authorizations. If you just need quick approval in certain areas, you can use a Lance provider. Click the blue button that says Create Part 107 Waiver slash Airspace Authorization. You'll see two options, airspace authorization or operational waiver. For this process, we're going to select airspace authorization, then click start application. Then enter your operation title. This can be something simple but descriptive like construction progress photos dash Dallas, Texas. Fill out your personal info and then click next. For the date range, just remember that it can't be more than 24 months from today. And for this example, I'll just do one week. So we can do September 1st, 2025 to September 7th, 2025. And if you do a few days or a few weeks, you're more likely to be approved. You could even do a month or 90 days if you're on a recurring job. The longer requests, like six to 12 months, those would be usually harder to get approved just because some facilities don't like blanket approvals of just in case. So I'd say either request a few days or a few weeks, or you could even do up to a month or 90 days, but that's about the limit before it would get a little harder to get approved. Also, avoid choosing a start date that's too soon. Aim for at least three days out and ideally five to seven days to give the FAA time to coordinate. Just remember that a real person is going to be looking at this application. Next, select your operation times like sunrise to noon or noon to four. You can even choose the whole day if you need it. For frequency, you might select by weekly or whatever fits your needs. Then set your local time zone. In the proposed location of operations, be specific. Here's a template we'll include in the description that you can copy and paste in your own application. So let's walk through it. We're basically saying that the flight operation will occur within a blank foot radius of coordinates, put in the coordinates, located at this location um, in the city and state. The operational area is within class whatever airspace, approximately blank from the nearest airport. So essentially, we're just going to give a very detailed description of where the location is. Again, the more information you provide, the better. Now add your maximum flight altitude and only ask for what you truly need. If you're flying at 250 feet, we recommend not requesting 400 feet just because even though it's allowed, over asking may lead to a denial or reduced altitude. Then enter your latitude and longitude, the radius you'll be operating in, and the nearest airport, and the class of airspace. So basically the proposed location of operations is just all this information in a short paragraph. And also don't ask for the whole city if you only need a quarter mile. Again, smaller and focused requests tend to get approved faster. 
Now in your description, clearly explain your purpose. Here's another template you can copy and paste. And as you can see, this is just another detailed description of what the operation is going to be like. So we're going to list the type of location that we're in, what type of project it is, the duration of the flight, any safety measures that we're adding to the drone or that we're going to be using, the airspace grid, the altitude, what we're requesting to fly at. And then you can always add in extra elements like seasonal or weather stuff. And just remember that the clearer the description is, the higher chance that the person reviewing the application will approve it and not send it back with questions or anything like that. And then finally, answer whether you have any pending or approved waivers. After all of this is done, you just review everything and submit. And then once you hit submit, this will be sent to an air traffic manager from the FAA who will review this application. Once it's approved, you'll see it under Manage Part 107 Waivers and keep that document handy so you can show proof you're flying legally if approached by law enforcement. And before we wrap up, I want to mention one more scenario where the FAA can move even faster, and that is emergency authorizations. If you're supporting first responders or you're part of an entity affiliated with them during a natural disaster or another emergency situation, the FAA can actually expedite approvals for operations in controlled airspace. In these cases, you would submit a special waiver detailing the operation. We'll link to that information down below so you can read the requirements and know exactly what's possible if you ever need it. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future drone videos. And let us know in the comments if you have any questions regarding further coordination. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.